They aren't states, but they are sovereign nations, over 500 of them within our borders. Navajo Nation President Jonathan Nez explains how Native American tribes can declare independence from the federal government while also being subject to its political process. So my understanding is there are hundreds of sovereign tribal nations. Over 500. Yeah. How does that work? What's it like to be a sovereign tribal nation within the borders of the United States of America? Sovereignty for us as indigenous people here in the United States is to protect our way of life, um, to continue our culture, our tradition, and our language uh, into the next generation. For us to be here on the Navajo Nation, you know, we are doing our very best to govern ourselves and to um, stand strong on our teaching. And sometimes it's a fight, it's a battle. Um, sometimes we have to go to Washington, D.C. to remind our federal friends there yeah. that there was a sacred obligation, a sacred document, this treaty that was agreed to between the Navajo people, the Navajo leadership, and the U.S. Uh, leadership at the time. The land here in any tribal lands is compared to any federal land throughout the country. So when we try to do some improvements, it takes a very long time outside the, the reservation boundary, the Navajo Nation boundary. You could, you could get progress and, and development done in days. But here, because of federal policy, federal regulation, it takes time. BIA is there still saying that they're still stewards of the land. But again, there are going to be folks that are being trained here, given those tools to go out and work in these various uh, offices in the future. And then they'll bring a different perspective to those offices. And it's happening now. Deb Holland, great example. First Native American woman to be in Congress. I see in the future more of our own Native American people um, walking the halls of Congress in leadership positions. And we fight uh, not just for our people, but for all indigenous people throughout the country because all the tribes really look up to the Navajo Nation. Being the biggest tribe, 27,000 square miles of land, 350,000 Navajos. Uh, so other tribes do look up to the Navajo Nation. So there's a, a lot of uh, expectations uh, being the leader of the nation and also our, our Navajo Nation Council members. What's important for all American citizens to understand about um, tribal sovereignty? That we can, uh, uh, if you want to say, persuade sure. some of our lawmakers to see that policy and law changes mm -hmm. would be beneficial to self-empowerment, um, local control, and to support tribal sovereignty. Mm -hmm. There's a story of the Hero Twins here. Uh, since when time immemorial onto uh, the many worlds that were uh, that our Navajo people went through. There's this, there's this part of history that says that the Hero Twins were fighting monsters, they were called, mm. at old age, hunger, poverty, lice, uh, and, and they were given uh, weapons to, to combat these modern day monsters. Yeah. And, and today we're fighting the, some of those same monsters, but there are modern day monsters that we're fighting. Diabetes, mm. you know, heart disease, cardiovascular disease, yeah. we got alcoholism, depression, PTSD, suicide, and it's because of the way tribal nations are structured. You know, we want to bring in jobs. If you bring in jobs, people will work and they don't go into depression. And I, I always say that it is time for us to help ourselves. No more of this handouts, if you want to call it, that keeps us in subjugation from one generation to the next. Sure. We have the ability to make our own laws, to teach our own children, and to improve the quality of life for us now and the future of our Navajo people. So it may be difficult for a lot of Native Americans living on reservations today, well, fighting those monsters, yeah, but there's hope because yeah, of things hope. like education and, Absolutely. and the things that you guys are doing to you know, help become truly sovereign. Absolutely. You know? uh, Native Americans are the uh, uh, highest percentage uh, of any ethnicity to volunteer in the armed forces. And of those uh, Native Americans in the armed forces, uh, a supermajority are Navajo people. 
So when we uh, agreed upon and signed our names on the dotted line uh, on this treaty, we said we would protect the United States of America. And to this day, we Navajo people, our veterans, our warriors, have always honored that promise to the United States government. And you know the stories of the Navajo Code Talkers, yeah. utilizing our language, you know. And that's what they fought for. They fought for the continuation of our way of life, our, our language and our tradition. And we honor our warriors here on the Navajo Nation. And so as me being a leader of the Navajo Nation, being the president, uh, I try to bring some of those uh, segments of history and share that with our Navajo public and let them know that we're, we're still a resilient people. The Native American chapters of U.S. history are full of hurting, but President Nez explains his hope that the future will be one of healing. You know, because our history is complicated and it's not always good to look at, how do we as a nation come together um, and, and look forward? How do we find hope? Uh, that's a good question, you know, and, and today, we're such a divided nation within the United States of America. Uh, I'll give you an example of last year. I, I said 151 years ago, we went on this long walk and we signed that treaty. Last year, it was the 150th anniversary. And so we did a commemoration. Uh -huh. And so what we did was we planned a run from Bosque Redondo Reservation, Fort Sumner, all the way back to the Navajo Nation, 400 miles. That was the 400 mile trek our, our people went all the way to Fort Sumner, and it was some tough times. And people said some bad things to the Navajo people during that walk. I, we, we hear oral stories of people throwing rocks at the Navajo and being marched through villages. And so we were thinking this is gonna be about the Navajo people. We started our run from Bosque Redondo, and people started joining us along the way because we were running on the, on the roads at times. And it wasn't just Navajos, it was, uh, African Americans running with us, Hispanic yeah. Americans, Anglo American, everybody running with us through these towns. That's what brought hope to the eyes of many, and it brought really a whole nother level of hope for our people, that where we can come together as one and to make better choices than our ancestors did, and to work together for the common good of all five-fingered beings. And guess what? Some of our brothers and sisters that were struggling from alcohol and drug addiction that were on those streets were coming out, giving us high five all the way. And, and they said to me, you know what? And this touched me, is that they said, it's time for me, because of what you're doing, it's time for me, I should go home. I should go home and, and take care of my family. And that's the power of of, of hope, I, I, I want to yeah. say. And like you said, we're all trying to do that, to be to make improvements from the past generations, to just to, to take one step farther forward, you know? Absolutely. That's great. And that's, you know, my, my vision yeah. in this presidency is not just to isolate ourselves on the nation, but to work with our governments in Gallup, New Mexico, Farmington, New Mexico, Page, Arizona, Flags, these border towns. Yeah and to just you know, embrace our differences, and, but also uh, there's a lot of commonalities as well that we can celebrate. This video is inspired by our PBS series, Reconnecting Roots. Visit reconnectingroots.com to watch the full episodes or to check out our music and podcast. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe so we can keep making more. Thanks for watching.